Um, I'd like to talk about outcomes versus outputs. Now, this is something that I've had many, many discussions with my clients, uh, people involved in projects, my own staff, other people in the profession over the past few decades or even longer. Back in 1992, I did a project, a curriculum architecture design project for the Ford Design Institute on the topic of robustness in engineering. And the people that I was working with, the master performers assigned, were all caught up in this uh, job. Number one is quality and customer satisfaction. And rather than identify the outputs, which is what I was looking for, they wanted to list all the um, outcomes, uh, customer satisfaction, etc. Well, my analysis methods call for identifying the outputs after first doing a work breakdown structure, if you will, of a job or a process into various chunks. I call them areas of performance. They're also known as major duties or key results areas or what Gilbert called accomplishments. Uh, and my approach is a derivative of a derivative of the Gary Rumler approach to analysis for instruction that I learned back in 1979. But so my focus is on outputs so I can identify, well, who are the stakeholders for that output and what are their requirements? And I believe that when those requirements are met, then you have the outcome that you want. But you can't practice generating outcomes in a training session, an instruction session, in learning experiences. You've got to focus on producing outputs that meet the requirements of the stakeholders, which will then lead back out on the job to outcomes that you're looking for. Um, so another story related to kind of robustness um, and generating outputs that lead to appropriate outcomes. Way back in 1981, I was an employee at Motorola and I was being given a tour of one of the Motorola manufacturing sites. Um, manufacturing materials and purchasing were my clients, my focus at, in my job at Motorola. And my guide took me uh, on a tour of a manufacturing line and we got to the very end and he said, do you know what this big block of cement is for? And I said, no. And he, so he proceeded and he grabbed a handheld radio and grabbed it by the antenna and whacked it on the big chunk of cement at the end of the production line. And you know, I was kind of amazed. It was kind of a, a little excitement there in the tour. And he said, uh, so he began to explain that Motorola warranty claims had been skyrocketing. And this was at a time when budgets were being cut in police departments all across the United States of America, 1981. And he said that, you know, the warranty, so they sent a quality uh, person out to investigate, you know, what's going on with all these warranty claims. Why are we getting them? These antennas are falling off the radios. And we're also getting a lot of car and truck radios for police, fire, and emergency services. They're being returned. Well, again, due to the budget cuts, uh, what was going on is that uh, patrol carmen uh, would be assigned in pairs previously, but they were being assigned to individually go out into their patrol cars and do the tour of whatever their assigned territory was. And this was, you know, those that were in dangerous neighborhoods, you know, didn't like that. And the rule was that, you know, if your radio worked, you'd be assigned to go out there by yourself. But if your radio didn't work, you'd be given a partner. Well, police would go into their cars and, you know, bash in the radio on the dash, hanging off the dash, and uh, disable the radio so that they'd be safer in being assigned a partner to go on their uh, tour. Um, the handheld radio case was another interesting one that the quality person had uncovered, and that was that it wasn't that the antennas were falling off the radios so much as it was the radios were falling off the antennas. Now, police are carrying around these handheld radios as they walk their tour. And if something happened and caused them a need to, you know, whack a perp, a perpetrator, on the head with their baton, they didn't have time to holster their radio and unholster their baton and whack the perp. So they were simply using radio as a baton and they grab it by the antenna and whack somebody over the head with the radio. And therefore the radios were falling off the antennas. So this led to the redesign of the handheld radio antennas to make sure that the radios wouldn't fall off the antenna should they be used 
um, in that way. And so robustness is all about uh, appropriate for use and misuse, some level of misuse that you can anticipate. And so looking at outputs rather than outcomes, you would identify the output and those requirements, uh, specifically requirements for each and every output, which then would lead to outcomes such as, you know, the police person in charge of the budgets would be happy and Motorola's warranty and manufacturing people would be satisfied.